Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm taping. Thank you. Let's do some review now. Those uh, numbers that I gave you, yes, you need to memorize them all. Okay. Um, if you don't know your basics, you will be challenged on some very simple questions because you don't know, you don't actually, 27 has to ring a bell to you, okay? And remember, we're not thinking multiplication, we're thinking perfect squares, perfect cubes. Can you see 6,000 and know that there is 1,000 in there? I can take the cube root of 1,000, okay? So, let's go through this stuff and just do some kind of review. Now, if you are looking at square roots, okay? Now, square roots are the invisible two is there, right? And I'm looking for two perfect things. Now, remember that if you have um, plus or minus four squared, that's what that means, plus or minus. So that's positive four times positive four is 16 and negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So no matter what, you will get 16. But be very, very ready for something like this. The square root of 16 can only equal positive 4. So when you take the square root of 16, there is only one answer. So everyone kind of plus 4. So you're going to have to kind of wrap your head around that, that the square root of a number will never be negative. Okay? Now, cube roots, remember, we're looking at what times what times what. Now, these ones can be negative because you can have negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Right? This does equal negative 27, okay? And the cube root of negative 27 does equal negative 3. It doesn't equal positive 3, though. It will only make equal negative 3. So you don't even get a plus-minus scenario that they can get you sucked in on. Okay? Now, I want to just kind of um, mix things up a little bit and just kind of get where... I know you guys did review, or you did this last year, so I don't want to review it too much. Okay, um, now, without using your calculator, what is the square root of 64? Square root of negative 64. Not possible, guys. Is negative 8 times negative 8 negative 64? No. Okay, so, make sure you're, uh, how about the cube root of negative 64? What is it? Negative 4, okay? So that just gives you an idea right there of the kind of uh, uniqueness of these square roots. And maybe some rules are coming back. Now, remember, you can use your calculator, okay? Um, if you were going to do, like, the fourth root of 10,000, you have to hit 4, then press math, and then number five, right? So what you would do is four, and then you would hit your fourth root to the 10,000, and it'll give you the answer. Ten. Okay? Now, if we just go right down to talking about radicals, let's at least have a common language. So when I say Hey, you guys, what does the index have to be here? You're not like index. What's an index? I don't know what an index is. Okay. Index is that little number up there. So for square root, the index is 2. Okay. It's not written there, but that's because it is so common that that's the one. The radicand is that little, or sorry, is the number in the house. Okay. And the radical is all of it. Okay. So again, it's not rocket science, but if you 
don't have it written down in your study sheet, maybe in four months it is rocket science because you forget that. Right? And during your final exam, there's no math teacher in the, or usually no math teacher in the uh, gym. For the diploma, I guarantee you there's no math teacher in the gym. So you can't go, oh, Stro, what's the index again? I forget what the index is. What is it, hey? Because I won't be there, right? So you need to know all of this little stuff, okay? Um, here's some good rules to know. But the square root of 9 times the square root of 4, it is equal to the square root of 9 times 4. But the square root of 9 plus the square root of 4 is not equal to the square root of 9 plus 4. Okay. How about this one, next one? The squ <clears throat> square root of 9 divided by the square root of 4 is equal to square root of 9 divided by 4. That is true. But the square root of 9 minus the square root of 4 is not equal to square root of 9 minus 4. Now those are some awesome rules to have written down because you're going to mess that up. Okay, so sum and difference, they're not going to be equal. But don't get that mixed up with this. The sum of 4 or this does equal this. Okay, sum of square root of 4 plus 4, but it's still in the house. 4 plus 4 does equal 8. Okay. Okay, so um, I guess know these two rules. Okay, the square root of a times the square root of b is the square root of a times b. The square root of a divided by the square root of b is the same thing as square root of a, a over b. Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about mixed and entire radicals. Okay? Now, square root 96, this would be called an entire radical. Okay? These would be called mixed radicals. And this one would be called the simplified version. Because, you know what the square root of 96 is? The same thing as 2 root 24. It's the same thing as 2, or sorry, 4 root 6. Those all give the same answer. They give the answer uh, 9.8. So square root of 96 is 9.8. 2 root 24 is 9.8. 4 root 6 is 9.8. See? In one, they kept everything inside the house. In two, they took some of it out of the house. In three, they took everything out of the house they could. Okay? And that's why knowing that sheet, or, or you know, your sheet in the back, you have to be able to look at that and say, ah, oh, there's a 27 in there. Oh, and, and, like, these are so contrived, these questions. Okay? You can only be so creative when you give a question on a test. If you guys know your perfect squares and perfect cubes, you're going to see them in there. Okay? If you don't know them, you will struggle through this entire unit. Time-wise, um, you'll still have difficulty doing some questions at all, and it's just going to be out of frustration for you. So take the time tonight, whatever, memorize these things. Now, memorization is the lowest level of learning. Okay? But... There are some things we do need to memorize in this world. Okay, the, the alphabet, uh, your phone number. Okay, yes, I know it's memorization. Your combination, you got to memorize it. Or it's a different day for you. Okay, have you ever gone up to your lock and you're like, um, I'm all crap, <laughs> what is it? And then you know the eight people you gave your combination, right? You're like, hey, what's my combination again, right? So you can see, it, can, it comes easy, 
and it also goes easy. Okay? It's the first thing you'll lose when you... The only nice thing about numbers is you're going to use them all the way through your maths or whatever if you continue in the math stream, right? So, entire radical, everything's in the house. And a mixed, simplified radical, everything's as out of the house as much as possible. Okay? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do some examples of changing from mixed to entire. Um, that way, so let's come down here. It says, convert the following to mixed radicals in simplest form. Now, by mixed, take everything out of the house you possibly can. Now, you just can't walk out of the door, okay? You have to be able to pass a certain test. And that test is, you have to be a perfect square to leave. Okay? And if you come in, you're getting squared. Okay? So, now, when you do these, I want you to be disciplined with these. I want you to take the step that I'm going to do next. What I need to do is I'm going to put a square root sign. Now, I need what times what? And the first what has to be a perfect square. So what times what is 320? Now, you can still use your calculator, but you've got to be trying. What are your perfect squares going bottom up? Okay, The first one's 4. What's the next one? 9. Then, then, then. Like, you've got to know those. So maybe take that. Divide by 36. See if it's in there. What's the next one? 25. 49, 64, you got to try those. Now, if you don't know the 64s, you're not trying anything. So, if you don't know 81 is a perfect square, why would you divide it by it? So, what is the good one? 64 times 5. Now, so this is, I want you to take the time to actually write this out. Now, that's not 65.5, that's 65 times 64, sorry, 64 times 5, okay? Now, I always want you to take time to do this step. Now, I know some of you guys are like, oh, man, I don't need to do that step. And those people usually get to the wrong answer faster, okay? That's the only thing they accomplish. And the cool thing about that is that uh, we get to hang around in 20-1 next year when you take it again, okay? So you have to do this step for, for many reasons, but these are so common to make little errors in if you leave the little steps out. Okay? Remember, I've done this for a while, so I wouldn't be saying this stuff if it wasn't true. Okay? And it'll happen. I'll have so many people get questions wrong. I'm like, why didn't you do step two? Because well, I'm pretty awesome. Like I have to tell you, I rock so much at math that I don't have to do step two. Okay? Well, you rock so much at math that you're going to do this exam over next year. Okay? And it always happens. And it's always pure arrogance, right? I don't have to. Like that's I don't I don't have to. I never had to last year. Oh, okay, hey. Don't yeah. If you didn't have to last year, that's cool. That's awesome. Okay. Remember, if you start reaching a level where it's not working anymore, you gotta up your game or lose the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so people at home right now? Oh, I see. Yeah, there it is. That would be bad if that speech was missed, eh? It's like, if I, I have a dream, and they're like, oh, wait, wait, let me press record. Okay, now, with this, I always want it to be the perfect square times something that doesn't have a perfect square in it. That's the goal. Now, you may have to do a couple steps, so that'll happen again. But what is the square root of 64? To take him out of the house, he becomes a 8. And you would get 8 root 5. Now, let's just, I'm just going to throw something out there. How would I know that's right? Check. What do you mean check? Ask your buddy. How do you check? So what would you do? What do you mean do the equation? What am I doing with it? Will this equal this equal this? Yeah. Okay? So do this step, do this step, do this. You should get the same decimal every time. Right? So there's a lot of ways to be able to do this. Now, if you don't know, like, I'm like, do you even know if 64 is in there? 
And they're like, well, why would you look for 64? And I'm going, if you don't know all your perfect squares, you wouldn't be going looking for 64. Right? So they are your alphabet now. All your perfect squares, your perfect cubes, and those I gave you up to, um, you know, all your um, perfect fourth roots. They are going to be just common. Okay? And these get redundant after a while. There's only so many questions you can ask that you can, that there are scenarios you know. Okay, cube root of 6,000. What is a nice cube in 6,000? 1,000. So, again, take the time to go like this, 1,000 times 6. Now, first of all, make sure you picked a good cube. Sometimes, now, again, why would you pick 1,000? Like, I don't, you know, why would you pick 1,000? Because... You memorized that 10 cubed is 1,000. You even know 1,000 exists, like you see 1,000. You see 27. 27, a little thing should be going off. Okay? 81s, things like that. 243s. 243, I know that's one of them, right? Now, cube root of 1,000 is 10 cube root 6. Okay? So those are entire mixed radicals. Okay? We don't have to keep doing more examples. I think you guys will get it when you're doing it. Now, this one here, this is Pythagorean theory theorem, and it is your a squared plus b squared equals c squared stuff. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this comes from a right angle triangle because anytime you do this and this, you have a an altitude and b a base and c a hypotenuse. Okay. And as you've experienced in the past, that is the only one that doesn't match up with the word. But at least two out of the three do, and the other one, oh yeah, it'll be that other long thing. Okay? Now, here's a formula for you. And here you have these x2, x1s, y2, y1s. Like, oh, Mr. Which one do you pick? The whole thing. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but if you're going to call that x1, call the buddy y1. Don't call it x1, y2. Bad things will happen, okay? You'll get them wrong all the time, okay? And what happens if you get it wrong? Then you start to feel bad about yourself, right? You don't come to class. If you're not coming to class. It means you're out stealing cars, right? So cars, jail. I mean, it just gets bad, okay? So do yourself a favor and pick an X1, X2. So this will be x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2. And keep that straight, okay? So then you could just go, okay, d equals square root x2 is 3. And then minus negative 6 squared plus y2 is 1 minus negative 2 squared. If you did it, making your x1, y1 the top one and x2, y2 the bottom one, you'll still get it right. So negative 3 minus 6 is the same thing as 3 plus 6, okay, which is 9. So D equals square root of 9 squared plus 1 minus negative 2 is 1 plus 2, 3 squared equals 9 squared, 81 plus 3 squared, 9. This is the same thing as square root 90. Now, that's only half right. And you're going to figure out that, you remember when you, when you do fractions, right? And you get 20 over 40. You're like, ooh, so awesome. I got 20 out of 40. Then you had it in, you get it wrong, right? You're like, what? I did all that work. And they're like, well, yeah, but you didn't. You got to reduce, right? Well, these you always have to simplify. Is there a perfect square in 90? There it is, yep. And the winner is 9. 9 times 10. Now, the 9 comes out of the house to become, so 3 root 10. Okay? Now, this should be review. Now, um, let's go talk about going to entire radicals. Now, entire radicals, they're just easy, okay? 
So remember, entire radicals means putting everything in the house. So what is two, like in, in A, what is two become if I put it in the house? Four. So this would be, now to see how we're going to stay consistent with the last time we did it. Don't do these in your head. I have students that mess these up when it really counts. So they'll go, oh, two, that's four, four times three is seven, and they write that down. Okay? So if you do this step, look at it and go, yeah, okay, good. Then do the next step, which would be square root 12. Okay? Now again, remember that if you skip steps to get to the wrong answer faster, that is not efficiency. Okay? Um, what about B? B's a gooder. What would you do? What would you do with this one? So you're leaving the negative outside? Okay, you're going to take it in. So that would be 25 times 6. Now, I just want to throw this back at you. If you were to put this in your calculator, would you get the same answer as above? Huh? No, just put in negative 5 root 6. Equals. And then put in square root of, in brackets, 25 times 6. Do you get the same answer? No. So these two are not equal. So what do you need to do to make them equal? You leave the negative outside. Don't bring them in. Okay? That negative, it's like your scraggly dog or whatever. Okay? He's not allowed in the house. Okay? Like, if I grew up on a farm, and it's weird, because when you grow up on a farm, it's weird to bring animals in the house. Right? Like the dogs, the cats, the cows, they all live outside. Right? It's not one day where you bring a cow in the house and you're like, come on, mom. I found him. He's over there. He's so cute. You know? Um, my dad actually, uh, when I was little, I grew up on a farm, right? When we were little, it, and it was 40 below, and we did have a calf. We had, like, had a calf in the basement, right? Because it was so cold and the whole thing. My dad had to warm him up. So we have had a cow in the house, actually. But uh, mom wasn't happy about that. So this is like, the negative is like the cow. A cow should not be in the house. Okay? So, leave them out. You can bring the 25 in, or the 5 in. So that's you. Your mom says, no, don't bring that thing in here. No one in here. You can come in, but I don't want that in here. Okay? So you keep your negative, and then this would be negative 150. See, now if I put any of them in, I will get the same answer in my calculator. That is crucial. Okay, C is a good question. Because that negative is like a chihuahua or, I don't know, whatever, any other dog. German Shepherd, maybe, I don't know. Okay, can you leave the negative out? Yes, you could. Can you bring the negative in? Yes, because you're allowed to take cube roots of negatives, right? So this has an or question. Now what happens when the 4 comes in? What does it become? 64. So you can have, I'm not going to do D and E, so you'll have lots of room here. You could have negative cube root 64 times 6, or you can have negative 64 times 6 inside the house. The negative can come in. Okay, this time your mom said, yep. You can bring the dog in. Now, just so we know what six, that's, uh, so you can have negative cube root 384 or negative cube root, oops, sorry, I already have that one, or cube root negative 384. Okay? So, again, Good things to have on a study sheet, because I could catch people on that. I know I could. I could say, are these equal, true or false? A lot of people would say false. You can't have a negative inside. But surely you told us you can never have a negative inside. I remember 
remember talking about that cow thing or whatever. I'm not sure what you said, but I know you can't bring a negative in. And I said, no, that's not what I said. Oh, that's what you said, Mr. Trimble. And then we fight. And then I get another student in, and they're like, what? No, you said you can only bring them in if it's A cube or what else do you think you could bring it in? Five, seven, nine. What do you know about those? They're all odd numbers, okay? So the odd, what are those things called? Odd indexes, yes. So with odd indexes, you can bring the negative in the house. See, that's stuff you want to write down on a study sheet. That's good learning. When you come back and see that study sheet, it's instantaneous you get it back. If it's not on your study sheet, guarantee it's gone. And I know you would get that wrong on your exam in the gym because you're going to come out. This happens all the time, especially in this school. You wait till the diploma. Everybody comes out in the atrium, and they do the entire test before they walk out of the atrium. What'd you get for five? What'd you get for five? Oh, did you know that member of the negative can go in or, you know, it's that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, crap. I did know that. Now I do remember that, right? So most of you will know what you got in the test because you'll mark it outside, okay? And the diploma, students knew they got one wrong. They got two wrong, okay? They got 100, okay? My students who got 100 knew they got 100. Not because they were like, boy, I'm so awesome. I know I did good. Because when they walked out, they checked it. And when six of you have it right and you rationalize it, the whole thing. And then there's always that one person that got it wrong that is fighting like crazy to show you you are wrong. No way. There's no way, right? So, okay. Now, that's all where we're going to... Uh, work on there. Okay, so we are doing doing 1 to 15. Just do A, C, and E dot 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 for those. Okay, now this goes extremely quick. So uh, Some of them are just like true false. So one, two, fifteen do ACEs. Yes. <laughs> 